Uh, friends, I am indeed delighted to, to participate in the U.S.-India Summit on Education, Research, and Technology organized by University of California Institute of Telecommunication and Information Technology. My greetings to Robert C. Dines, President, University of California, Mary Ann Fox, John Slow, University of California, and Paul Jacobs, Chief Executive Officer, Qualcomm, and Ramesh Rao, Director, Cali2, researchers from government and industry, laboratories, uh, technologies, and distinguished invitees from USA. And India, particularly, I'm very happy to see Sibalji see there, and the Honorable Minister Sibalji and uh, uh, Sam Petrada. My greetings to all of you. Uh, friends, I, as I interact with you uh, through the end-to-end -end optical network of high bandwidth, I see the contribution of University of California, San Diego, and the Indian team uh, towards the establishment of this interactive knowledge system. I can see you very beautifully well. I would like to share with you an interesting experience that I had this week. A small girl, Anukriti, her name, asked me a question. I am trying to find an answer with all of you today. What is that kid can ask? She asked me, Rashtrapati ji, you can see in my PowerPoint, you are saying prosperous India will come in 2020. Why not by 2010? Seven years old girl, little Anigridi asked this president. Now, this happened a few days back in my place. How to answer this question? I am, I am saying my country that before year 2020, India should become economically a developed nation. This kid asked me, you accelerate to 2010. That's the echo of my nation. Friends, California University system is well known for its contribution uh, towards high-end science and technology research. Many of the students from our Indian Institute of Technologies, as well as other Indian universities, have been in the California universities as, as students. Similarly, many faculty members of the Indian Institute of Technology, Indian Institute of Science, and other few universities of India are the alumni of California University of System. This continuous cross flow of students and faculty between California University system and the Indian universities has enriched both sides and it has been extended spontaneously between the Silicon Valley and the Indian industry. The fact that the two cultures seamlessly merged uh, to move the frontiers of knowledge forward shows the commitment of both our nations to collaborate. This mutually beneficial collaboration is the icon of the future, wherein we will witness the creation of wealth and prosperity in the global knowledge village, by not only by networking of computers for sharing information, not only due to the convergence of technology, but uh, due to the convergent seamless connectivity of cultures and people. In this emerging world, we will not only witness universities without walls, but also university systems that are borderless, without the barriers of geography, religion, and culture as a symbol of universaliz universalization. Now, when I'm with you, friends, I'm presenting certain thoughts on education technology, and society. I realize intensive cooperation has taken place between Indian teams 
and the University of California, San Diego, during the last two weeks to organize this virtual event. In order to make this nation the most advanced knowledge societies, we should aim at making the bandwidth available without hindrance at no cost. This is what I'm preaching my country. Making the bandwidth available is like the government laying the roads. Movement of material through these roads creates wealth in the industrial economy and the government recovers more than the investment on the roads by way of taxes and enhanced prosperity of its people. In the modern digital economy driven by knowledge products, bits and bytes traverse the network and create wealth and this will cover recover the cost of investment in the bandwidth. Today, what we are witnessing, what we are witnessing an example of making a virtual presence from India to University of California. You can see my PowerPoint. You may see the whiteboard where you can find the network architecture that facilitated today's connectivity between the Rashtrapati Bhavan and the University of California. My greetings to all of you friends. Here, I would like to share with you an experience. Experience how technology does not end where it is. Technology has to go to the people. I have lost a quarter century, have worked in many fields. One student recently, when he was somewhere in the eastern India, asked me a question, Mr. President, can you please tell me which is the event, uh, which is the completion of the pro project which made you very, very happy? A young boy of, of 15 years asked me this question. It's a beautiful question because what made you happy? I like to recall 1980, July, when India launched its satellite launch vehicle, a rocket force state, put a satellite in the orbit. It's a big happiness for me, my team, because I was involved. You can see that. So, and this, uh, when the satellite went to orbit, it was a big happiness. Then I was involved in defense research. When the IRBM, when it reached the target, when it reached the target for 2,000 kilometers, it was a great happiness. We celebrated it. And you can just see that. Similarly, in 1998, same month, a temperature 52 degree Celsius in desert, when the India became a nuclear weapon state, India became a nuclear weapon state, then the whole Atlas shrank what we witnessed in that uh, desert. And it was a beautiful feeling that nation, the beautiful feeling the nation has become a nuclear weapon state. That is another great happiness. But I am not satisfying the child when I asked the question, which event gave you happiness? I am going to tell you what is the event made me happy or a bliss. The next stage of happiness is bliss. It's like that. When I was working on a launch vehicle and missile system, we developed a material as a students and professors of this university, your university will know, a carbon-carbon material for re-entry heat shield. That when I used the carbon-carbon material, you are still carbon-carbon material, and then a three kilogram calipers or FRO flow reaction orthosis has become weight become 300 gram that is one tenth. You can see the girl with the FRO calipers she is riding a cycle. When the parents saw her child can cannot move but with the lightweight FRO and the child the parents were beautiful tears they got in their eyes. That was the greatest happiness 
I had. So friends, I would like to tell you, technology does not end where it is unless technology goes to the people. Whatever you do, whether University of California, whatever you do in the University of India, we have 300 universities. What is important, like the child, that the girl who is going in the cycle, who cannot move with the FRO, flow reaction, orthosis, or calipers. So friends, now I want to tell you about the ambience in India. You must know what type of ambience of India today. India is well on its way to become a knowledge society with all-round growth in three sectors of the economy, namely agriculture, manufacturing, and services. Uh, today, we have an opportunity to take the lead in the knowledge revolution, which indeed is the foundation for transcending in India into a developed nation. That means the economically developed nation. Mission for Developed India has two components. One is poverty removal through economic development. The other is building a value-based society through civilizational heritage. Very important. A beautiful, prosperous society does not come only by economic prosperity. It has to have value system, a spiritual life, a integrated life. That's what we are working for. Uh, friends, now with the ascending trajectory of the economy, Availability of institution for capacity building of the human resource, abundant biodiversity and other natural resources, and above all, all our 540 million youth who are determined to make our nation prosperous, happy, and a safe place to live, it is definitely possible to realize this vision before 2020. That's India as a developed nation. India is taking the lead in mobilizing and integrating national and international knowledge resources for becoming a part of the global knowledge society. That's how my team, Indian team, is with you in your campus. I am with you today to discuss and share my experiences in this area. Now let me start with the first area of discussion on convergence of technology. I realize the India and the University of California has uh, made some uh, integrated plan. I would like to talk to you on convergence, convergence of technology. It's very important. Information technology and communication technology have already converged, leading to information and communication technology. You, we all call it ICT. Information technology combined with the biotechnology has led to the bioinformatics, as you all know. Now, nanotechnology is knocking at our doors. It is the field of the future and that will replace microelectronics, many fields with tremendous application potential in the area of medicine, electronics, and material science. When nanotechnology and ICT meet, integrated silicon electronics, photonics are born. It can be said that material convergence will happen. With a material convergence and biotechnology linked, a new science called intelligence bioscience will be born, which could lead to a disease-free, happy, and more intelligent human habitat with a languity and a high human capabilities. Convergence of bio, nano, info technologies can lead to the development of nano robots. Nano robots I witnessed when uh, during my visit uh, in Korea. South Korea, when they are injected into a patient with a particular disease, my expert friend say will diagnose and deliver the treatment exclusively in the affected area, and then the nano robot get digested as it is a nano based product. Friends, let us talk about biotechnology, bioinformatics. The conversion of bioscience and IT into bioinformatics has given the thrust to researchers for genomics based drug delivery and development. Pressure is mounting over the pharma companies to reduce or at least control costs and have a growing need for a new informatics tool to help manage the influx of the data from genomics and turn the data into tomorrow's tricks. This is the major mission for probably for Indian universities and the University of California, San Diego. Indian scientists and technologists have developed biosuit 
a software package that caters to all aspects of a computational uh, uh, biology from genomics to structured based track design using publicly known algorithms. Now, another interesting area somewhere in the southern part of India it's happening, that's called gene chip. One of our research centers called the International Center for Biomedical Sciences Technology has developed a gene chip uh, which could be used for finding the existence of genetic diseases including coronary artery diseases or neuro defect in the baby during the certain stage of pregnancy itself. The chip could also be modified to suggest to the patient system to develop those chemicals which in turn could help the patient recover from the present disease. Recently, one of our biotechnology companies, Biocon in Bangalore, has developed an antibody-based drug for cancer called Biomap EGFR and will be available at a competitive price in the market. Next area, friends, which is known to you, nanotechnology. When I think of nanoscience and nanotechnology, molecular nanotechnology has enormous potential for future aerospace system and healthy areas. Research has shown uh, that a newly discovered class of molecules leading to the development of carbon nanotubes that could have multiple applications in the area of electronics, uh, particularly nanoelectronics and power system. Carbon nanotubes are normal form of a carbon with remarkable electrical and mechanical properties as, that, as the audience know. It is hoped that such material could revolutionize revolutionize electronic design and open the space frontier for radically lowering the cost of launch to orbit. Now friends, carbon nanotubes reinforced with polymer matrix will result in composite which are super strong, lightweight, small and intelligent structure in the field of material science. Fortunately, both India and the USA has a collaboration in the material science. This has tremendous aerospace application. Molecular switches and circuits along with nano cell will pave the way for the next generation of computers. Ultra dense computer memory coupled with the excellent electrical performance will result in low power, low cost nano size yet faster assemblies. Now, sci now friends, I let me talk to you. Products progress in nanoscience technology in India, some examples, so that your university will be aware what's happening in India. Now, the water nanotube filter water purification, this is one area, some of our university is working. The scientists from Banaras Hindu University have devised a simple method to produce carbon nanotube filters that what you are seeing, that you efficiently remove micro to nanoscale contaminants from water and heavy hydrocarbon from petroleum. The filters are hollow carbon cylinders and several centimeters long, one or two centimeters wide with walls just one third to one half of millimeter thick. They are produced by spraying benzene in a tube-shaped quartz model and holding the mold of 900 C. When I visited, when I visited, when I visited their laboratory, I saw this facility. This is a classic application of the latest in science, nanoscience to solve the age-old problem of water purification. Next one, healthcare typhoid detection kit. Typhoid detection kit has been developed by a defense laboratory using the nano sensor developed by Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. In India, the morbidity due to the typhoid varies from 102 to 2,200 per 100,000 population in different parts of the country. In some areas, typhoid fever is responsible 2 to 5 percent of deaths. In all India, for routine diagnosis for typhoid disease, Vidal test is performed with single serum sample which does not provide the correct diagnosis of infection. Therefore, a latex acclimation based test has been developed using recombinant DNA technology and the immunological technique for rapid diagnosis typhoid infection. This test detects uh, yes, typhi antigen directly in patients serum within one to three minutes, which is very important for initiating early treatment and saving human life. Application of nanotechnology has enhanced, enhanced the sensitivity, sensitivity by 30 times and reduced the requirement of the clinical sample of detection. 
friends a very important contribution and it can be shared between india and the, your university now your research team of university of delhi has developed 11 patentable technologies for improved truck delivery system using nanoparticles four of these process have been granted us patent one of the important achievements at the initial stage of drug delivery research was development of a process for the synthesis of hydrogel and smart hydrogel nanoparticles for encapsulating water-soluble drugs. This method enabled one to synthesize hydrogel nanoparticles of size less than 100 nanometer diameter. This technology has been used by an Indian pharma company. Another technology transferred to industry has nanoparticles to, en to encapsulate a nanosteroidal trick which improves the bioavailability of trick on the surface of the cornea. The technology has also been transferred to another pharma company. Let me discuss an important mission which both our countries are focusing. Energy for future generation. The World Energy Forum coming here. The World Energy Forum has predicted that fossil-based oil, coal, gas reserve will last for another five to ten decades only. Already it is uh, visible. Hydrogen fuel and use of solar power are the two processing modes to get clean power apart from nuclear power generation. I would like to discuss the research challenges, particularly in the power generation through solar photovoltaic cells using nanotechnology. Carbon nanotube CND based solar cell for higher efficiency. The low efficiency of conventional photovoltaic cell has restricted the use of solar cell for large application of power generation. Contemporary research has shown that alignment of CNT with the polymer composite substrate results in aligned CNT based PV cells giving very high, high efficiency in photovoltaic conversion as a much as 15% laboratory scale. I am sure scientific researchers in India and the University of California will be excited to work in this area of research in partnership with the industries so that we can realize large-scale production of high efficiency solar cell which will lead to competitive power generation. Now I would like to describe a societal grid which is essential for bringing the connectivity of people towards building the knowledge society with the Indian example. I call it technology-based societal grid. 70% of the 1 million people, 1, 1 billion population of India live in 600,000 villages. To provide quality lifestyle for the people are living in the villages, we have evolved what is called rural development concept called Pura. Pura means providing urban amenities in the rural areas. You may refer my website www.presentofindia in .nic.in for details. This, this uh, involves development of a physical connectivity, electronic connectivity, uh, and knowledge connectivity, and uh, uh, to the rural clusters of 20 to 30 villages with a population of around 20,000, 50,000 people leading to economic connectivity. The country will have around 7,000 puras. Development of technologies and their convergence have significant influence on the society in terms of providing knowledge, health care, governance, and the economic development by establishing connectivities between them. These connectivities will certainly bring seamless access and information flow among the various domains leading to maximization of GDP and productivity. Hence, there is a need for establishing the societal grids consisting of knowledge grid, healthcare grid, e-governance grid, and pura, pura grid. This interconnecting grid will be known as societal grid. Knowledge sharing, knowledge utilization, Knowledge reuse are very vital for all constituents of the society for um, promoting non-linear growth. You may refer my address to the, the General Assembly of the International Union of Radio Science on 25-10-2005 at New Delhi about the electronic connectivity of for a billion people. 
we have so far discussed the, all the four connectivities required for the societal transformation of the nation. This is now ripe uh, for the creating the world knowledge knowledge platform uh, for promoting uh, promoting the convergence of core competence of the partnering nations leading to world class products and system for bringing economic prosperity. I understand your president, University of California, talked about similar line. I have some proposal for you. That is a core presentation, my core presentation for you today. Now, friends, world knowledge platform. When I was uh, during my recent visit to Singapore, Philippines, Republic of Korea, I put forward the concept of world knowledge platform, which will integrate the core competencies of partner countries to develop knowledge products. I am sure scientists and researchers from the United States of America, particularly from the University of California, San Diego, will be keen to participate in this mission. This platform will enable joint design, development, cost-effective production, and marketing of the knowledge products in various domains based on the core competence of two countries, three countries, four countries. Now, initially, the mission of World Knowledge Platform is to connect and network the R&D institution, universities, and industries using fiber broadband from the partner nation on selected R&D mission. The underground fiber cable infrastructure already exists among many partners as being demonstrated today. This global knowledge connectivity will support multitude of seamless connections and supporting both synchronous and asynchronous communication carrying either text or audio or video. We can then use this network in the academic environment to teach courses online and share expensive equipments remotely in the industrial en environment. It can be used to design complex systems, even ones that are as complex as an aircraft in a collaborative way using the virtual prototyping concept in the cyberspace. As USA is collaborating with many countries, in India we have today an example of a successful joint venture which harnessed the core competence of two nations, India and Russia, who have different cultures, languages, and design as standards. The product that has come out of this world class much ahead of the other countries due to the joint working of best of minds from both countries, that is BrahMos One. I have discussed the details of this program in our book, Envisioning the Empowered Nation, in the sixth chapter, Advances in Strategic Sector, which I am referring through Rashtrapati Bhavan Digital Library. This proves that if the core competences of nations are combined, it's very important for the University of California and the Indian scientists assembled there. If the core competences are combined and knowledge products are created, you will find the, a, a new product of competitive product, missions of world knowledge platform. Now I am putting the proposal for both groups of University of California and my Indian team. The convergence of bio, nano, ICT, is expected to touch every area of concern to the humanity. The World Knowledge Platform will take up missions in some of the areas which are of utmost urgency to all of us to make our world a safe, sustainable, and peaceful and prosperous place to live as the child wanted. The areas are energy, water, healthcare, agriculture, food processing, knowledge products in ICT, transportation sector, herbal, and natural products, and space exploration. We may focus in the, in the areas of design, development, leading to productionization for meeting the market demands of the respective countries, and also for the world market using the core competence of uh, partner countries. The World Knowledge Platform, what I'm proposing, will also evolve a virtual knowledge park uh, with the participation of collaborating countries, which will act as a platform for many innovation to take shape through collaborative research and development leading to a production and marketing. For example, initially, the World Knowledge Platform uh, can take up the mission, such as low-cost tablet PC, less than $150 embedded electronic system, 
communication, and wireless system, high-efficiency CND-based solar photovoltaic cells. Research on earthquake forecasting, very important. It's a challenging for the world. Just now we saw the earthquake in, uh, in Indonesia, but we have to forecast. That's a big research problem. For details, you refer my uh, lecture on World Knowledge Platform during the address of special session of NASCOM 2006 India Leadership Forum on 17 February 2006 as Mumbai, as I have shown you. From in short, the knowledge platform would be a launch pad for many innovation that are waiting to be unearthed only by combined power of multiple nations and multiple uh, scientific talents. Development of human resource is a prerequisite for research. This is another point I'm going to put for you. Hence, I would also like to discuss about the development of a global human resource cadre. Global human resource cadre. What is that global human resource cadre? In the 21st century, world needs a large number of talented youth with higher education for the task of knowledge acquisition, knowledge imparting, knowledge creation, knowledge sharing. At present, India has 540 million youth under the age of below 25, which will continuously be growing till the year 2050. Keeping this resource in mind, the universities and education system in India have to create two cadres of personnel. The first cadre, youth will expertise, youth with expertise and special skills. Second, youth will higher education with research and technology expertise. These two cadres will be required not only for powering the manufacturing and service sector of India, but also will be needed for fulfilling the human resource requirements of various nations. It is essential to increase the throughput of the higher education system from the existing 6% to 20% by the year 2015, 30% by the year 2020, and 50% by the year 2040. Others, Others who are not covered by the higher education system will have world-class skill set in areas such as construction, a carpentry, electrical system, repair of mechanical system, fashion design, paralegal, paramedical, accountancy, sales, marketing, software, hardware maintenance, and services, software quality, assurance, personal, etc. All the youth will have either a world-class higher education or a world-class skill set University of California can become a partner to this mission. Uh, beginning, beginning through Indo-US education network, through EduSat, we have a satellite app, EduSat, we have to now focus on enhancing this network with more number of universities and institutions. India presently contributes over 400,000 engineers and scientists who are deployed in India and different parts of the world. Now, friends, let me conclude. Let me conclude. Conclusion, education, education and the island of peace. A yeah, new situation, yeah, conclusion, education and the island of peace. A yeah, new situation is emerging globally where generation after generation, the comfort levels of the people are, has becoming better and better. In the midst of this ever-increasing betterment of lifestyle, there is a lingering uncertainty and insecurity. This fear of, however subtle in each one of us, has the characteristics of a snowball, snowballing into insecurities between nations and cultures. The economically developed societies and the economically developing societies both are haunted by problems unique to each other. The question is, under these circumstances, how we build a prosperous and peaceful society in the planet Earth? In the knowledge era, economic development is directly controlled by the knowledge development. Any economic divide would be a direct consequence of a knowledge divide. Can education provide a path and hope for smoothening that knowledge divide? When you go up the ladder of prosperity, a never-ending monotonous quest of the man, mankind, the role of education and universalization is to reduce the knowledge barrier between nations. Are we doing that? In this connection, I remember 
when I presented to my parliament a few verses, I said, I, I climbed and climbed, where is the peak, my lord? I plowed and plowed, where is the knowledge treasure, knowledge treasure my lord? I, my, I sailed and sailed, where is the island of peace, my lord? Can the California University system and the Indian universities of 300 universities work together, set the examples of ways and means by which education can help us to reach the peak, locate the knowledge treasure, and to live in the land of peace. My best wishes to the participant, participants of US-India Summit in their mission of broadening areas of engagement uh, to include new research thrust for promoting excellence in education, research, and technology in different parts of the globe. So my best wishes for all of you. God bless you. We now have time for questions and answers. Uh, friends, now, if you are not tired enough, uh, some questions, if you pose, I would like to answer. Uh, please introduce yourself come, before come, you ask come. your question. Otherwise. We have a question yeah, coming Lord, up. My dear friend. <laughs> Hello? Okay. Fast, fast. Move fast. Uh, I'm Umar Osman from the Troy School, UCSD. Um, what advanced... Uh, no. How is India improving the education in areas affected by poverty for people who cannot afford education? Well, we have... Uh, uh, what's your name? Umar. 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 Uh, you know, we have just a uh, few months back, I ascended a parliament uh, bill, a parliament uh, bill I pa, I ascended. It calls for, it calls for the uh, primary education up to the age of 14, a uh, free and compulsory education throughout India. So that is one move. And now recently we have decided all higher educations, uh, we are going to increase the seats, number of seats uh, in various uh, universities and various technological institutions. Uh, so continuously we are uh, trying to uh, upgrade the uh, universities, upgrade the technological institutions and increase the good teachers and increase the good students also. So it's a continuous process. Thank you for the question. Next question, please. Hi. My name is uh, Anup Doshi, uh, President. It's an honor to be able to speak to you today. Uh, I'm a graduate student here at UCSD. And I was wondering uh, what your views are. Today we are talking about developing powerful new technologies and collaborating to develop these technologies. But uh, with new technologies and powerful technologies, uh, there's always the fear of uh, getting them into the wrong hands and using them the wrong manner. So what are your views on ethics and having a high moral ground in developing these technologies and collaborating with partners that uh, are in similar ethics? Uh, Anup is like that. Uh, science and technology are innocent, you know, they are innocent fellows, science and technology. What's happening, you see the chemical technology, chemical technology increases the product productivity of agricultural productivity. 
the same chemical technology can be made chemical weapons also okay similarly what you are flying the aircrafts it takes passengers and flights also it makes uh, bombers and fighters you see the rocket flights it puts satellite communication satellites in the orbit remote sensing satellite in the orbit uh, the same technology delivers the missiles delivers the weapons so what and also you see the nuclear power nuclear technology it can generate nuclear power what i see uh, we also generate nuclear power at the same time you can make the bomb also so finally as you rightly pointed out it is the type of uh, political system good human beings they decide the, the technology should go the prosperity of the people and it is done technology wherever we are used the prosperity has come for example today we are producing 200 million tons of food it's because of the technology and also our um, ict about 20 billion dollars of products being exported and 10 billion dollars of uh, at, um, products made in in uh, telemedicine tele education e governance so it looks to me technology has to be in the hands of good human beings i agree with you okay okay <laughs> okay next question next next question please yes next question next question please. coming up yes yes and while we're getting set up for the next question perhaps the one after that could raise their hand so we would know can you see me mr president this is more of a statement than a question um typically i'm cynical of politicians uh, but uh, after I'm, listening to i'm happy you are smiling you know i'm happy you are smiling <laughs> <laughs> but after i'm a highly technical person i have a phd myself but after listening to your presentation i'm just blown away Uh, some of the things you said what, went what's your thesis what what's what's your thesis <laughs> it was on control systems robust control but i couldn't find a job with that sort of switch fields <laughs> oh, robust control but i just want to say you know some of the things you said went over you my head i'm just adaptive control you got a job <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to sign up <laughs> yeah, but sure. i just want to say that some of the things you said yeah. went over my head i'm just happy to have someone like you lead our country then some of the other politicians have come across just to sustain it so <laughs> we have bob here with a question well first i'm from the venture capital community in the united states and there are enormous uh, opportunities in india um uh, the time you're taking this morning uh, indicates to all of us just the symbol of the time you've taken the importance of both this meeting and the topic that it's about the question that i wanted to ask has to do with what in the united states was a very important program uh, 60 and 80 years ago and that was rural electrification um we have so many new technologies many of which you touched upon uh that make local what used to require effectively power plants and wires uh Paul Jacobs remarked about the cell system and that has uh made communications possible in the rural area in a way that it would be would have taken many more years if done by wireline so and now to rural electrification what are the plans that you have and the technologies that you see to bring electrification to the rural communities uh in india uh, 600000 or more thank you so much what the name name well i your name i was a uh, 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 friend i it's a beautiful question i greet you uh, you know we have a program called bharat nirman program bharat nirman program means india's uh, uh, development mission and we are going to spend from 2006 to 2010 about 35 billion dollars 35 billion dollars uh, mainly focusing uh, the connectivity of the villages physical connectivity uh, electronic connectivity and knowledge connectivity will lead to economic connectivity one of the main focus is power generation now we generate about 100 and 130 
a thousand megawatt power and what we need the next few years about uh, 150,000 megawatt power. So we are increasing the power generation through thermal power, nuclear power and also hydropower. Uh, definitely we are going to uh, reach the villages is a good point that one of the mission for Bharat Nirman program is to reach your villages and electrify all the villages within the four years time. I hope answered your question. Okay. And uh, another important thing is the we are working that uh, particularly University of California and the Indian universities have to start a mission uh, that is how do we by combination of CNT, carbon nanotube and silicon base we can increase the solar cell efficiency more than 50 percent. In Pittsburgh University some work going on, in Indian of Science in India is going on. So we have to consolidate the work. Within three years time we must reach a solar cell efficiency to 50 percent using a nanotechnology that will make a lot of change in the rural electrification. Mr. President, uh, that was uh, Bob Khan, the previous dean of the Jacobs School of Engineering here who had asked you the question. Next question from Veera Kripalani. Please introduce yourself. Uh, Rashtra Patiji Sadar Pranam. I'm Veera Kripalani and I work at Qualcomm, but I grew up in Delhi and I went to IIT Delhi at a time when a lot of professors there asked me what was a woman doing in an engineering school. Uh, things have come a long way since then, and um, I've, I'm very proud of what India has achieved. And I was very thrilled to see your vision, especially the Pura concept. My question to you is, is there anything special you're doing for the women, for the young girls, in that concept that would really uplift them? Although we have come a long way, you know the women in India still need that special lift. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. Uh, Prani, Prani is like this. Uh, Prani G is like this. Uh, today, any university class you see, 50% uh, are girls, more than 50% are girls. So you can be rest assured. Uh, women are taking education very seriously. And I was uh, addressing a convocation address somewhere in the East today, uh, a few days back. And there were nine nine prize gold medals, nine gold medals, and uh, out of that six gold medals, girls got it, okay? Girls got it. Only three boys got it. <laughs> so message is there are the participating women education is very important. For example, in India 2020, in the mission of India 20, we are given the highest priority for education and health care. In the education itself, women education is the highest priority because we have seen Wherever we are going to women education, small families are born. So it is, uh, that's our highest priority. Thank you for the beautiful question. We have a question from Suhas Patel in the front row here. My name is Suhas Patel. Mr. President, uh, I had the great honor of receiving honorary doctorate with you before you were president at IIT Kharagpur. I come from Silicon Valley. And uh, America has been much built by entrepreneurs. So my question to you, how do you see the role of entrepreneurs in the future development of India? Would it be occurring in large scale? And what influence they can have? Uh, uh, dear friend, uh, Patel, I want to tell you that uh, yesterday I was uh, addressing uh, my State Bank of India, uh, one of the big bank in India, the message, I would like you to see my website, uh, www.presentofindia.nic.in. <laughs> there I have given a talk, uh, the entrepreneurship is very important for India as you rightly pointed out. Instead of people seeking the employment, we need employment generators. So I am advocating in my country, the whole syllabus has to change in the secondary school education and the university education, how to become a venture capitalist, how to become an entrepreneur, and how to take risk. This will be taught in the education. And yesterday, yesterday when I was talking to my bank uh, 
Honorable Finance Minister was with me. He also agreed with me. Venture capital will made it easy in many banks in the country. So I visualize in another five years time, when you go to the any colleges, if you ask them, what are you going to do? They will say, I will become an entrepreneur. And that population will increase in my country. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Uh, Avron Sukumar, Srinivasan has a question for you, Mr. President. Mr. President, my name is Srinivas Sukumar uh, from Cal IT2. Uh, follow up question on the Pura concept. How can we from the University of California help you further the Pura concept and what are some of the biggest obstacles in the way of realizing that vision? I, I, I believe Srinivas is something like this. Uh, you know, uh, both uh, the University of California, San Diego, and you select your partner in India, one of the universities, uh, very close to in Bihar it can be, or it can be Orissa, uh, or any, any, any states. Uh, take 20 villages, take 20 villages, and survey the villages for water potential, transport potential, employment potential, and knowledge potential. And then what core competence uni University of uh, California has is the education. And the education, how do we give the education uh, to the people to improve the core competence of the state? It may be fisheries, it may be agriculture, it may be art. So you should, uh, you should see that the technology addition to the core competence of villages. That means you are doing the value addition. Once you do the value addition, then the, the, the state earning capacity increases, and that will be known. Here is a collaboration between two universities of USA and India. We found the, the products, what we are making. Suddenly, we add technology uh, from these two you know, university, university collaborators, and we have added the value addition, and we have become rich. And that is really what you should do. And definitely, you send an email to me. I will send you the whole <laughs> details. If you go to my website, you will find a Pura Enterprise. There is a there is a paper Pura Enterprise, and um, it, it will give you all the details. Dr. Warki has a question. Ajit Warki. Your Excellency, uh, my name is Ajit Varki, and I'm at the medical school here, and I was a graduate of CMC Velour that you recently visited. And uh, I just wanted to comment that, uh, as you well know, India is a land of extremes and paradoxes. So even though the prior comments suggested that women are backward in India, as you know, in CMC was started by a woman, was run by women, and they only let men in 1952. Now, the the paradox of the future I want, uh, I hope that we will consider in the medical areas, even as we stamp out poverty and hunger, there's a rising incidence of obesity, diabetes, and the illnesses of the West already beginning in India. So I would suggest that as we go forward uh, with improving the health and nutrition of India, we should also take into account uh, the, what, what follows when, with excess nutrition. Thank you. Ajit, eh? uh, Mr. Ajit, it's like this. Uh, we have uh, in our mission, as you rightly pointed, there are many institutions uh, created by women and managed by women and everything. And most of us are managed by women also. I hope so. <laughs> but uh, I am a brahmachari, you know. I am innocent. <laughs> but one thing I want to tell you, that one of the mission, five missions to make the India economically developed uh, is education and healthcare. Education and healthcare we have combined purposely uh, so that the wherever the good education is there for women education, the small families are created. Uh, so we understand that it's very vital for uh, a revolution needed in the country, particularly a certain uh, states in our country, the population and the education are interconnected. So we are uh, moving in a big way to spread the women education as a priority and uh, government's one of the priority women education. Okay? Next question. Please introduce yourself and face the camera. Next um, Mr. President, uh, I'm Raghav Rao from SUNY Buffalo, State University of New York at Buffalo. 
Uh, no relation to Ramesh Rao, though I think I knew him uh, 40 years ago in kindergarten in, uh, in Bihar. Uh, my question is, uh, you are speaking about the collaborative agreements with uh, Sunny California, and I was wondering if you can see in the future any agreements with Sunny Buffalo. <laughs> You know, I say the uh, sky is the limit, you know, <laughs> sky is the limit. Uh, definitely, uh, many cooperation, our honorable minister is there, you catch him. You catch him. <laughs> minister of, minister of uh, Science and Technology is there, and you catch him. <laughs> okay. Next question. Please, once again, face the camera. Uh, respected Mr. President, my name is uh, Loganathan. I am working for GE Security. Um, I did my PhD in India, in Hyderabad. Uh, my question is on a slightly different topic. Uh, lots of people, poor people in India, die due to terrorist attacks. I mean, it's a very common thing. And uh, I believe the biggest threat to peace in the world is terrorism. To counter terrorism and uh, to save people from terrorist hands, I believe India and US should cooperate and do a collaborative research. And there are so many hurdles in terms of export control and other things. For example, I am working on developing explosive detection systems uh, using different uh, technologies. So these things are not available to India, and there is no formal I believe there is no formal approach to handle these export control issues from both sides, Indo-US side. What's being a scientist from DRDO, I believe you, sh you should be aware of what are the needs and available technologies in India and what is required from other countries. I would like your comments on this. Thank you. <laughs> Loganathan, uh, thank you for this question. I would like to say the terrorism is not a unique for India. Uh, terrorism is the international, is the international, you must realize that. And of course we have a, a cross-border terrorism in India. Every uh, nation is uh, going through now. Uh, so you can have a, a police, you can have an army, and you can have a very uh, everything um, on the control, uh, you feel terrorism can be eliminated by uh, military or police. I feel no. That's not the only thing. I would like you to go to my website, www.presentofindia.nic.in. There I have given a talk. The talk is a three-dimensional approach to bring a peaceful world and and also prosperous world. How to do that? You can see that I have given the three-dimensional approach. First approach, actually University of California and Indian University, since all the big guns are assembled here, I believe my model, you must understand what I am saying. The model is three-dimensional. The first one all the children, whichever part of the world, up to the age of 17, they must be given education with value system. Every country has got a certain, it's a unique value system, a cultural civilization value system. That should, for example, when I was a student in college, Reverend Father Rector used to come and talk to me for one hour every Monday about Mahatma Gandhi, about Abraham Lincoln, about Einstein and about uh, Omar and Khalifa Omar. So it looks to me we need our children not only learning in the classes as integrated education with value system. This is the first dimension. Second dimension is the how do we transform religion into a spiritual force? You know, religion has got two components. One is theology, analysis, spiritualism. Theology, you cannot touch. Religion, you cannot touch. They will get upset. But spiritualism, in every religion, the same. So we have to find a bridge. 
to connect the all the religion that's why i'm saying a uh, transform religion into the spiritual force you may have heard loganathan you may have a doubt whether it is possible you is it possible uh, to transform religion into a spiritual force but you go to my website i have explained how in india how in india it has happened i uh, that spirit, that religion transformed into the uh, into a spiritual force the church a christian community 1960 they gave me the church from where the first scientific experiment first rocket flight was done in india there there was a bishop he became a spiritual human being and a scientist vikram sarabhai he has become a universal human being so friends what is needed re- transforming religion into a spiritual force third dimension is the wherever prosperity wherever you have a economic prosperity only few countries it will not bring prosperity it's not bring peace it is essential the nation should join together wherever there is a poverty we must remove the poverty through the core competence of the nation it is a respond international community responsibility so friends the three dimensions like this first one education value system to age 17 a uh, second one is the transforming religion into a, a religion into a spiritual force third one remove the poverty bring the economic prosperity for this we need a world body we need a unique world body that unique world body will carry out the task i give this thought loganathan you asked a fantastic question you read my website this talk i have given and send me email i'll ask you the answers i'll send you i have to uh, start wrapping up this session uh, i think uh, i would like to invite president dines to say a few words of thanks mr president president kalam thank you god bless you <laughs> President Kalam, it's an honor and a pleasure uh, to have you with us. You began as a cyber link, but I believe by the time you finished, you were physically here, thanks to technology and your personality and answers to the questions. You've laid out a vision, your vision, but it's not unlike our vision, uh, a vision of energy, air, water, food, health, transportation, and how together, using technology and education, we can address those for world prosperity a healthy and prosperous world will be a peaceful world and together we can get there thank you very much for joining us today mr babu dai thank you